Yes, and uh, I was uh, just personally responsible for the pizza, so blame me if you didn't like it. Um, the, I just want to say, maybe just welcome. Uh, thank you for coming. This was the first attempt at pulling something together. We did it very, very quickly. So the people that are going to speak this evening are also the organizers. So if you could, you could also maybe give them a word of thanks for just putting this together. Um, this, so this is the first attempt at uh, Personal Cloud's uh, community gathering for uh, the hackers, builders, and makers. And hopefully this is the beginning of something great, something big, and something interesting. So without further ado, I'm just going to turn this over to Johannes, who uh, is going to open it up and we'll have some speakers. Thanks, Vivian. Good evening, everybody. So this is pretty amazing, I have to say. Last um, summer, Kalia and I met somewhere in Berkeley and we were talking about we should do something about personal clouds and have some kind of event. And we were thinking maybe you know, enough people will show up to fill a dinner table. And here we are, we have a waiting list. Can you believe that? It's the very first event. So it must resonate somehow with people. It's not entirely clear what resonates so far to me because you did not fill out the survey very much that is there. <laughs> Just a few people did. I really wanted to know, but um, if you can still do that, that would be very, very useful. So my task is to sort of set the stage how we got here and what we're trying to do. And uh, to do that, I have two slides, and the first one of which I decided to give you the entire history of computing in two minutes. Let's see. Does this work? Uh, here we go. So, in the beginning, there was the mainframe. It was a great big mainframe, and it was good. And it was operated by the priesthood of mainframes that operated it and left the users out and away as far as possible. As a user, you couldn't really touch the machine. You could occasionally bring some jobs, which would be run by the priest of the mainframe or whenever they decided. They gave you as much or as little memory as you wanted. And if they didn't like you, they could cut you off and kick you out. But some people didn't like that. Um, and so they grabbed a bunch of parts and glued something together, soldered it together, and that turned into the personal computer. Why? Because people wanted control over their own computing experience. And it was crappy and it didn't work very well, but before we looked, <coughs> nobody talked about the mainframes anymore, and the PC took over the world. Now, thank you, that is much better. Now that was before the internet. Here comes the internet, and all of a sudden we are connected, and theoretically the internet was designed to be much more like the PC than the mainframe, but you would have computers talking to each other peer to peer. But we all know how that worked out, it didn't. It became much more hierarchical than it was ever designed. And today, if you look out there, what we find is you know, big web companies that you know, own major parts of the internet um, in the, pretty much the same way as the you know, mainframe that did that uh, in the days. As uh, you know, Doc Sills would say, it is uh, your choice of mainframe or your choice of silo. We have a bit more choice than back then. But it is still a choice of somebody else's control. And I think the reason why we fundamentally here is to investigate this question here. Is there some mechanism, is there something we could do that gives as much control to the individual as the PC did back then, compared to the mainframe? But that is connected. You know, there's essentially a cloud computing thing. And you know, some of us, and hopefully most of us, think we could call it a personal cloud. Now that we have agreement with what it is, no. Do we know how to build one exactly? No. We know about as much, I think, as we did at the time when Bill Gates was start, uh, starting to write BASIC or, you know, the people at the, at the Homebrew Computer Club were putting things together. It's at the beginning, so there are no answers yet, but lots of us in this room are building parts to this. And the question is, you know, can we bring them together somehow? Can we build something that provides an alternative to somebody else's cloud? You know, having to give up all sorts of things by consuming other people's you know, mainframes of the 21st century, is there some way of you know, getting, putting ourselves back in control? And that's I think what we're trying to find out. Uh, from my perspective, assuming that this set of meetings here and this community goes forward and it looks like it does, we could turn this into some kind of uh, homebrew computer club where you know, people show up and say, here's an interesting project, here's an interesting product that I have, here's what I found out, and this, the whole event today is designed that way. A bunch of people show up, five minutes each, and say, this is what we've got. 
and I firmly you know, in, uh, believe that mine is the right thing, my approach. Other people have other approaches, but let's put it together and see what it turns into. And I think, you know, as technologists, I think many of us in the room are technologists, I think it's our job to figure out whether there's an alternate model to the big bad company model. Yeah, I think it's got to be different. Uh, you know, I don't want to live in a world that is entirely taken up uh, on the left side of the, of, of the, uh, of the, of the diagram. And so, let's see what we can do. So, in earlier conversations, uh, mostly at IAW, which uh, many of you know, that uh, Kalia has been moderating for a very long time, and in the <coughs> workshop, we had a bunch of sessions, and we came up with three important levers of control that have to be taken into account when talking about control, because it's all about control. Who has control here? And there's three parts. Control on the bottom, control of the data over apps and over terms. What does that mean? Control over data, well, in, if I have a PC, I decide what data I put on my hard drive. I decide when I delete it, delete it and I decide who gets to get added. That's control over that data. In a cloud computing environment today, we don't have it. I don't decide what gets stored about me or related to me, and I don't get to decide when it is being deleted, and I you know, do not know who is being shared with, and so forth. Let's restore control of the data. The data should be mine, under my control. Secondly, control of the apps. I should have the ability, just like in the case of a PC, to go out and buy a bunch of apps and run them against my data and delete them if I don't want them anymore, just as we put it on the PC. Why can't we do this in the, in the cloud computing environment? <coughs> Some of you forgot that this was a good thing. We would like to have that back, control of the applications of the code that runs against our data. And thirdly, control over the terms. Today we have no control over terms, what happens to us online. You know, every now and then we hear these great uh, examples where somebody lost essentially his entire life because of some terms of service violation he did never hear about and he had no recourse uh, for and it could not even be explained to him. That doesn't work. We have to go and reassert our own terms over our own things. Just like with my PC, I decide when to switch it on and when to switch it off and whether or not you can use it this afternoon. I have control over that PC. I'd like to have that in the cloud computing environment as well. And so I think if we have these three components, then everything what meets these requirements, for me, is a personal cloud. And I think we need to sort of put this out and explain to the world that there could be another way. Of course, we also have to build it. But that's all I have to say, and I hope that this turns into a vibrant community that puts an alternate uh, model out there. I should point out Kalia, who is going to moderate uh, the presentations and keep everybody on track uh, for the rest of this, um, of this event. She, of course, is the executive director of the uh, PDEC. You've seen the red dots on various uh, stickers. All the people who have red dots uh, are members of PDEC, which is an organization that brings together uh, and helps a lot of companies and individuals work on these kinds of things. Great. Come here, your turn. My turn. Thank you very much for that. Oh, I should say there's a wiki at personalclouds.org. There's a mailing list, uh, and it is all very basic, uh, but take over. Uh, it has a very, very uh, fascist uh, uh, account uh, registration scheme right now to keep the spammers out. I apologize for that. That's the simplest thing I could think of. But sign up and say something. Great. Thank you. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is actually invite all of you who have an empty seat beside you to move in so that the late people can sit on the edge here, please. And the good thing is your attention will be kept for this hour because the presentations are really short and we're really strict. You get five minutes. We're not doing Pecha Kucha you know, present our hurdles. You have five minutes, but that's it. And two minutes of questions. I will be your moderator this evening. And first up, okay. we have Adam from Virtru, who is our host. So we should give him amazing thanks and applause for letting us use his office today. So Adam, here you go. Excellent. Thank you. First of all, thank you everybody for attending and welcome to our headquarters. So this is our headquarters for Virtue. And we share the office with two awesome companies. One is a company called Hench Docs, and they build these amazing map docking stations. So feel free to put your name in for the raffle. They were generous enough to raffle through them off. So please put some money in for that. Um, and also with Rooster Green Media, and they build websites. But so a very brief overview of Virtue. We actually work on verified identity. Our goal is to be the verified attribute provider or really the global economy in the 21st century. 
and my presentation is very short. So what is, just not what is virtual mean, but what is really, what are, what are attributes and what does our data really mean? So in, in a sense, you are your cloud, right? But, but in a, who are you as well? So if you think about all of your data, right, we're feeding data into essentially the internet via a variety of different places, obviously the two main ones being your phone and your computer. So saying we're putting this information in, it's going into different services that are all sort of siloed different services with their own terms of use and privacy policies and putting that information into those siloed data sets. But what comes out of that? And what happens in your data when it comes out of those places? So in a sense, there are many of me in, sense, in, in one way too. And so you think about it, who are you in the real world? Well, here I am speaking in front of you right now. I could leave this meetup and go to something else and be somebody different completely. But I would argue, and people might hear, may not fully agree, but online, I actually can't hide that easily anymore. In fact, my data is in a lot of different places. And they kind of all come together via a variety of different search engines. And as I'm sure people here are pretty aware, a lot of other companies are searching through that data to identify a single you. So what we would argue at Virtue is, you know what, there is online really just one version of you. And you should start taking that data and cleaning up that data in ways that represents you appropriately online. And you can put it into, of course, your personal cloud. So as a kind of a, a use case example of that, now that Facebook has launched their graph search recently, if people have had access to it, you may have done some searches or you saw maybe the Tumblr blog that showed some pretty interesting searches that came up. The simple fact is it's starting to show what's happening in the future of online identity where your identity, the information that's out there about you, is, is in many ways is you for better or worse. And so you have to start working and clean that up and really do things to verify and look at it in different ways. So what can you do to clean that data and then trust that data as well? And then you can put it into your personal cloud and use it however you want to use it. And so that's some of the things we're thinking about a lot. In the core data and the attributes that you are, we very much believe help make the personal cloud. So that is kind of the intro of who we are at Virtue and also of course hopefully starting things off for other people to talk more about personal clouds directly. So thank you so much for being here once again. Please enjoy the food and we really appreciate you joining us for the first personal cloud meetup. So thank you. Great. So we have any transition space and two minutes for questions for Adam. Questions. You can ask questions? You can ask a question. Yes, Dave. <laughs> Hi. It's a really stupid question. So, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Dave, it's not a stupid question at all. And, and the answer of what we do is we verify um, the core attributes of individuals, such as work, education, history, location, and a few other pieces of your information, to say this is actually real and trusted information about who you are. Now, you as an individual have every right to use it, and we don't verify those without you as the user giving us permission to do so. So you're attesting certain things about me. Uh, I wouldn't call it testing, but in a sense no, we're... testing. In other words... Oh, testing, testing yeah, yes. Like testing, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's correct. Yeah, we're testing to things that you claim and saying they are real and they're true. Mm, cool. Yeah. Yeah, another question. And just mechanically, yeah. you do that by checking behind the seat, like, like with the driving bureau or the search company or something? The so they... Yeah, so great, great point. So how do we, how do, we do that? Well, yeah, so we're using a variety of different sources. Some of them are online data and different data sources like Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Contacts, and others. Um, and we're also using other sort of real, more real-world data to augment that and, and help provide this verified identity um, for the individual. Yeah, Drummond. So, um, Adam, in a personal cloud ecosystem, would, would it be fair to characterize what you're doing as being a... Uh, what the federation guys would call an attribute provider, but two individuals in their own personal clouds? Um, so Drummond's question was about how does this work in the personal cloud ecosystem and being an attribute provider and stuff like that. So the answer is yes. I mean, it, it can work between different personal clouds. And it is about being an attribute provider because that, truly my view, and, and you can certainly speak about it in more detail than I can, but um, the attributes of who you are and how that's used are, are pretty core to making the system work overall. So we believe it's a, it's a critical piece. Cool. Great. That was two minutes of questions. So next up, we have my colleague at PDAC, Phil Wolf, and he is going to be presenting about something. Something. Mm -hmm. He's going to tell us all about it. 
So give him a round of applause.
and that's respected. All of these, these things are respected in law, and we don't have that for our personal cloud universe yet, and we have to get there. And so the question is, can we trust? You know, how much do you want to trust it, and what do we have to do in order to get it so that user rights are both paramount in the business modeling and in the technology architectures of what we do, but also on the civil and legal side and the community expectation side of personal clouds. So toward that end, I'm hoping that we have fiduciary clouds <coughs> and that we can aspire to that. And I'm so <coughs> thanks very much. So the, so the question was, so what was the question was like, what do we do about that? Or, okay, so the, so the question. You pay for that, you own it, but you cannot unlock it. Right, so the question, so the question is, um, under the new law, uh, we're not allowed to unlock uh, a phone. And that, uh, this is unlocking in the sense of being able to take your phone to another telephone service. Um, and this is despite the fact that you, can, that you bought it. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, all the folks at EFF and other places are talking about which rights go with the gadget, which got rights still belong to somebody else when you buy it. Yeah. Um, Another question? Brad? So it was interesting you brought up the accounts at the end of the list because they're the ones who don't have privilege on confidentiality the way the lawyers and the priests do. Right, they don't have, pri they don't have privilege. So the others have privilege, the accountants have a fiduciary duty. <laughs> So the metaphor I've used, which maybe I'll suggest to you, is uh, I, when I was first started writing with many years ago, I called it the data deposit box rather than the personal cloud. And I want to see if we can bring in the metaphors from the safety deposit box, which is a box you don't own, but you have more legal rights and protections over than the ordinary thing that's out there. Mm -hmm. So maybe there is, the best thing you can do to lawyers is show them a precedent that says it worked this way and now let's make it work another way. I don't know if you have any more like that. on that. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, time for one more? Sure, Germans. Uh, well, we need new regulation to get the fiduciary clause, or can it be done under a contract law today? I don't know. The question is, can we do it under? Do we need new law uh, to make fiduciary clouds, or can it be done under a contract in existing law? And I don't know. Yeah, very It might be one of those things we, as a community, bring to NSTIC. And if you don't know what that is. It's the National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace trying to figure out a bunch of these things with lots of interesting folks from around the country and many different industries. Um, so next up is my the other Phil in my life, and he's a <laughs> Phil W2, he's Phil Winley. Um, he and I have run the Internet Identity Workshop for <laughs> eight years. We're having number 16. That's a long time. We're having number 16 in May, and we're inviting you all to that. And um, I actually don't know what Phil's going to talk about, so come up here and share for five minutes. So how do I advance slides? Space bar. 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 Space bar.